Good morning, guys. You hear me OK? Yep. Good morning. On you go, Daniel. Yeah. I think I think we've got to keep him because we're in the roundabout again of players just that aren't built for United. You know, what is a United player nowadays? The likes of Pogba of all we've got in to draw on of the comparisons. We're just we're nothing of what we were and we're judging United on what we were 10, 11 years ago. And until we say no players, the manager stage, you go. We, it will never change. And they know that. They know last night there was, an, there was an easy out for those players through the injuries we've got. And on the pitch, you could see it. They knew there was someone else to blame. And we've stuck Ten Hag in the middle of this. He's not been backed at all. We've bodged together a squad with loans and, and it just falls again on the manager until we root the squad out to the players he needs because we know he's a good coach we've seen it he's not obviously he's not elite he's not world class but there's not many world class coaches that are out there anymore that could do a job with what we've currently got and I think back a manager gives years because the other way just not working it's not worked for 10 years Mourinho was a good coach and we destroyed him Van Aal was a good coach and we destroyed him so I just don't see it stopping unless we finally back someone with his method of football the players he needs when you say they destroyed them, what do you what do you mean, Daniel? What the players destroyed them? Mourinho and Ten Hag as, uh, and uh, Van Gaal. They came, as, they came in as reputable coaches and were outed, and then we still have those same players that got the next coach outed. It's just it's never changing cycle of player power at United. Big fees, big contracts. One thing I will know about Ten Hag: if you look at some younger players he's signing, he, I listened to Gary Neville's piece with him, and it's it's clear he's been given a brief on how United want to move forward with the style of football. This is prior to Ineos coming in and Gary never asked him why why haven't you just sat behind the ball because you know we've been predominantly counter-attacking for the last six years and he said because that's not the brief I've got he knows it's not working and he knows he's in the deep end Daniel's made a few points here Simon there's a message um, from another United fan what about Michael Carrick with Steve Bruce Brian Robson working behind them got to be better than what's going on well yeah I mean that's an, that's an emotional sentimental attachment because all these players have played for their, that club during a successful period player power only works if you've got ineffective ownership and that allows player power to be the predominant outcome you don't employ a coach so that players can have more power than the coach you employ a coach so he can have power over the players and if player power arrives in the dressing room it's because a coach has allowed it when you look at, at, at Manchester United and you look at, at, at Ten Hag and you look at the challenges that he's had and the culture of Man United, he is in part responsible for an element of it. When you talk about Mourinho, Daniel, Mourinho left for different reasons. Mourinho was in a very dark state of mind, living in a hotel, allowed to live that way by the ownership model, and also had a, had a tantrum because he couldn't sign Harry Maguire. Then you employ Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, who frankly wasn't good enough, and Louis van Gaal was a rather difficult... <laughs> I would say unpleasant character that didn't bring out the best in Manchester United in either their media relations or their style of play. So all of those explain about nine years of Manchester United. Ten Hag, to me, doesn't create a solution. If the, if you're, if the argument is Man United are no longer as good as they once were, can it be that the only way to get better is to get people that will make it better rather than people like Ten Hag that, to me, have had two years to fix a problem two years to create some indication of going in the right direction and I don't see how anyone can make an argument that they are. Briefly come back in that, Daniel. Simon's saying, no, it's tough to make an argument for Ten Hag. You're saying proceed with him. Yeah, I do understand that, you know, he is part of the problem but when you look at it like the Rashford situation, I think these players are just fragile and he knows that he could out them all. He could come out in a press conference or after the match and say, rubbish, rubbish, rubbish but we know what happens there. They just sink even further. I okay. think he's hanging on by his fingernails, and I understand why. But I think give a coach. But Daniel, I don't think he should come out and say that players are rubbish in a press conference. I would question. Not which particular memo, which particular relationship players, say like Rashford, have got when they don't think they have to turn up training. I would wonder why that culture existed 18 months into a manager's role where everyone clearly by that time should know exactly where they stand and they don't seem to. And I wonder why that is. Yeah, good point. Daniel, thanks for the call. There's another message coming in. That to me seems to say it all. Mark, Manchester United fan. Players' attitudes have been the same since Ferguson left. Contract's too big. They've got too much power. It's time to get rid of the toxic, overpaid, dead wood. At Manchester United. Well, that's, I suspect, what the centering 
in the culture of the football club that Radcliffe and his team yeah. will most likely bring, whether mm. that's cleaning up the training, changing rooms or getting the culture right in the first team, it is a job lot. And if you've got someone focusing on it, is it I don't see United as some ridiculously difficult task to fix. You know, Graham Sooners, whether you like it or you didn't like it, Graham Sooners talked about Casemiro in a different way 18 months ago. He's a steady Eddie. We're now looking at Casemiro. Who signed him? Who signed Casemiro? Ten Hag. Casemiro yesterday. Is that a player, irrespective of being played out of position, that's exhibiting to a manager that he's supposed to play for yeah. the prerequisite amount of culture and respect? I don't think so. No, exactly. Onana Dalot, Casemiro, Evans, Wan Bissaka, Anthony, Manu Mount, Eriksen, Ganacho. Highland. Which of that lot do you keep? It's 10.30. Jim White and Simon Jordan. Monday to Friday mornings from 10. On AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.